We all know this lightning, this lightning, and maybe even this lightning. But did you know that there is this and this too? What seems to be an idea from a science fiction book are actually real life phenomena, but the chance that you'll see something like this in real life is very small because it's rare. So if you have experienced it, consider yourself a lucky son of a bitch. I'm assuming most of us have been out of school for a while now, so let's quickly refresh our memory of how lightning works. If you're not interested in this part, just skip ahead, but I promise I'll keep it short. This is a cloud, and it consists of many, many particles. Every particle carries an electrical charge. Some of them are positive, and some are negative. The same thing is true for particles in the ground. Typically, the cloud base becomes negatively charged while the ground below it becomes positively charged. And since opposites attract, the negative charges in the cloud want to join the positive charges in the ground. But those two don't have it easy. The air doesn't support this relationship, so it's not really interested in helping the charges out and acts like an insulator. Therefore, the journey is a little rough and the charges can't meet each other all the time. However, as the cloud grows, the charges become stronger and eventually overpower the grumpy air and make their way to each other. Since the charges have been pining for each other for a while, they take the quickest route possible, which logically is the shortest, meaning the charge from the cloud travels to the highest point in the ground within a certain radius. Once a route is established, electrons quickly travel downwards. This is called a return stroke and it's what causes the bright flash. Okay, that's enough refreshing, let's move on. According to Wikipedia, there are three main types which are categorized by their starting and ending points. According to me, there are four. When a lightning's beginning point and ending point are both inside a single cloud, it is called intra-cloud lightning or sheet lightning. When the starting point is in one cloud but the ending point is in another cloud, it is called cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning. The third type has its starting point in a cloud but the ending point on the Earth's surface. This is called cloud-to-ground lightning. I know, the names aren't very original, but hey, at least they're easy to remember. And then there is the fourth type that Wikipedia does mention at some point but then continues to ignore later on. It's cloud-to-air lightning. As the name suggests, the ending point is in the air. There are a bunch of other types, so let's look at some of them. This crazy thing here is called ball lightning and it's obvious why. But sadly, we don't know how it forms. There are different theories, but none of them have really been confirmed so far. Unless you don't want to be the one doing the figuring out how it works part, we'll have to wait until someone else does. This here is called ribbon lightning. Remember earlier when I told you about return strokes? A single lightning can have one or more of these strokes, and a strong crosswind moves the return stroke sideways which leads to this ribbon effect. The wind needs to be at least 50 to 80 km per hour for this to happen, and since most of us don't know what that means, here are examples. It becomes hard to walk or even dangerous, as loose items start to fly around and even shingles are blown off. Next up, we have blue jets. These are rarely noticeable from the ground because they occur on the upper part of the cloud, which usually isn't visible to us during a thunderstorm. This is a form of lightning that shoots upwards from the top of thunderstorm clouds and moves towards the stratosphere. The blue light is created because of the interaction between the electricity and the molecules in the upper atmosphere. These jellyfish thingies here are red sprites. They form high above thunderstorms in a different atmospheric layer than usual clouds due to electric fields generated by lightning flashes in underlying thunderstorms. Because the pressure is lower higher in the atmosphere, electrons travel upwards very quickly not even caring to look left and right, causing collisions with nitrogen molecules. These collisions make the nitrogen molecules emit red light as they return to their normal state. And last but not least, we have bead lightning. This happens when the return stroke breaks up into multiple bright segments because of turbulent airflow and electrical conditions within the lightning channel. Every segment has a different level of luminosity. Beat lightning is mostly observed during very intense thunderstorms, but overall it is less common than other forms. Let me know if you're a lucky son of a bitch, and if I've entertained you long enough for you to hear this part, you owe me a like. See you in the next video.